now. It's Boomer Life, lifestyle discussion designed to make your life more engaging, meaningful, and complete. Celebrating the baby boomer generation, this is Boomer Life on Sea Isle 650. <laughs> Yeah, fine selection to kick off the show. The Doobie Brothers listen to the music, which is a little harder for some than others. And today we're going to be talking about that whole uh, part of your uh, health, really. Uh, Boomer Life here on CL650. I'm Zach Spencer. Today we're talking about the latest innovations in hearing uh, with Next Gen Hearing. We're going to be speaking about the uh, inner workings of the year from an expert perspective. And we'll be offering real solutions for those suffering from hearing loss. And welcome back to the show, Dr. Ted Venema. Welcome back. Hey. Thank you. Thanks for being here again. Good to be here and again. And I always love your enthusiasm. You're a great <laughs> speaker, and if uh, you haven't listened to this show before, you're going to learn a lot, and it's going to be very entertaining. So uh, sit back and relax and listen to the show. Now, you're a registered audiologist. You're, all, you're a doctor. I get a PhD in, in, yeah. in, in audiology. A post hole digger. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or a poor, honest doctor. <laughs> Not the kind that can help anybody. No, no. I'm just teasing. Yeah, yeah I, I studied audiology at Western Washington and Bell. Bellingham mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in, uh, in Washington State, and then uh, went on at University of Oklahoma and studied further. But yeah, I'm going to register here. The, and the you province. travel around North America giving mm -hmm. speeches to Do students? Do a lot of talks at state conferences and provincial hearing conferences and things like that. I used to do more clinical testing of hearing. I find I, I enjoy explaining it. And you're very good at it. I have to say, I've learned a lot uh, from you to, uh, to the point I was bringing it up uh, with family members of uh, our conversations here on the mm -hmm. radio about uh, hearing devices. And I passed on some of your wisdom about how it's a prescription. It's not just mm -hmm. like your glasses. You need a certain prescription. Yep. Same thing for hearing aids. Yep. And it's different for every person. From my father, who's 83, and talking mm -hmm. about he's going to go and get an appointment. You're okay. going to help me <laughs> to send him to somebody in Toronto. So that's where he lives. Uh, next gen here is West Coast, right? Yep. So where are Next Gen Hearing um, locations? Next Gen uh, began in Victoria and spread in, into across the strait over to the uh, mainland, but mm -hmm. not on the lower mainland. That used to be called mainland hearing. Okay. He started offices there, uh, Mark Hambly did, and Next Gen was on the island and in the interior. So you had Next Gen on the island and interior, and mainland was on, in, on the lower mainland here. And only as of April this year did they amalgamate all into next gen so, so it's rebranded yeah so next gen i would say has about 40 some clinics across the province of bc and you're you do work with them and you're yeah. happy to recommend them right absolutely i did con i did uh ran an office for a year in victoria mm -hmm. and now i do contract work with next gen i do uh speaking engagements for them and this radio show yeah well, that's great that you're yeah. here so today we're going to talk about um uh the outer and middle ear uh for the first half of the show mm -hmm. and then we're going to talk about um What's the second uh, half of the show? The second half of the show, I'll make it up as I go along. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm just teasing. The second half of the show is the inner ear. Okay. So you've got the outer, middle, and inner ears. And the outer and middle ears can be talked about together. Okay, so let's get into that. So uh, what are the main types of hearing loss that are related to the outer and middle ear? The middle ear and the outer ear, hearing loss like that is like having a plug in your ear. Mm -hmm. I mean, think of the most obvious, your ears, your outer ear canal. Your ear canal is about an wax, inch long, right? two and a half centimeters long. That can get wax. And the outer half of your ear canal, especially in older men, is kind of, there's hair, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And wax, whatever, and no matter what the gender, wax forms in the outer half of your ear canal. And the inner half of your ear canal, the skin just covers bone. There's no wax produced there. But when we use Q-tips, all you're doing is jamming the wax in closer to your eardrum. And remember, it's only about an inch long. It's, it's curved, kind of like a dog leg. It has, has there's, there's two corners. Your ear canal is not like a straight cylinder. Mm -hmm. And to really see an eardrum, a doctor or a physician or someone looking in pulls your ear up and back to, to peer in with the light to look in at your eardrum. Okay, so uh, what do you say about these Q-tips? Not Don't, good. Not good? Not good. Doctors always say never put anything in your ear smaller than your elbow, and mm. they're quite right. Uh, 
people can use warm water or, or wax softeners that you buy at pharmacies. Mm -hmm. And I'd put a couple drops of that in your ear first to loosen things up. And then you can use an ear syringe, which you can buy at the drugstore, with warm water and, and, and irrigate or flush your ear. Mm -hmm. But that's about as far as one should go. That's if, what I do. Is I, I yeah. don't stick anything in my ear. I just flush it out. Yeah, because you'll notice... And anyone listening, has, if you've ever put anything too far in your ear and you feel that sharp pain, that's your eardrum saying, ouch, and you're not supposed to go in there. So what is the wax for? Wax is actually very good for your outer ear. It's a bug retardant. Believe really? it or not, it's <laughs> bugs don't like the taste of it. Well, I don't either. But uh, at any rate, your ear canal is like your blood temperature. It's nice and warm. In fact, nurses, when they take your blood temperature now, they can put they put something in your ear. Yeah, that's right. Okay? Well, we do that with little kids. Yes. Like uh, we have a the little sensor and they put it in their that's ear. That's right. Yeah. And so can you imagine how nice and enticing that would be, how inviting that would be for a little bug to, go, to lay eggs, you know? And that, sounds, I guess it's when you're sleeping, right? Yep. And you're, so your outer, and it keeps your ear canal moist, but earwax has a purpose that way. But... You know, some people produce earwax and then we tend to, you know, more than others. And shoving something in your ear only pushes it in where it doesn't belong. You're mm -hmm. pushing it in further. You're right. So if wax is stubborn and it's a problem, you should get, get it removed. <laughs> so why is it important that we focus on uh, your inner and outer ear? Well, the outer ear is, is as I say, the most fixable kind of hearing loss. The doctors can remove or nurses can remove or hearing instrument specialists who are trained in it, audiologists can remove your wax, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and and your, your middle ear sits right behind your eardrum. Now, those two areas are accessible by medicine. Those two problems to those two areas can often be remedied and fixed. But if you've got problems to the inner ear, which we'll talk about later to, today, um, that can't be medically fixed. And so what? I'm sorry. Ninety-five percent of hearing loss is caused by damage to the inner ear, to which the is inner un, ear. unfixable. Okay. So what kind of hearing losses do you get from the outer and middle ear? The outer and middle ear gives you what they call a conductive hearing loss. And think of how electricity, how a wire conducts electricity. Mm -hmm. it, 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 think of conduction as a pathway. So problems to the outer and middle ear affect the passage of sound. They, 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 that's why I said earlier, they act like a plug. And the most common outer ear problem is wax. The most common middle ear problem is ear infections. And that, most, that happens mostly to kids. Children get earaches. And it, why is that? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked that. Children's heads are a little bit squatter. When we, age, when we get to be adults, our faces elongate. Now, there's a, a room, or I should say a, a tube, from two tubes from the back of your throat, behind your tonsils, that go up to your middle ears, mm -hmm. one on each side. And that's called your eustachian tube. And now infections in that the back of your throat, when you get a sore throat and an, uh, a throat infection, it, the bacteria can crawl up that eustachian tube and get into the middle ears and infect your middle ears. Now, children, because they have squatter faces, their eustachian tubes are more horizontal, less uh -huh. vertical. Mm. So they don't have gravity working in their favor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's why people tend to grow out of ear infections because as they reach adolescence, their faces are elongating and the eustachian tubes are becoming more vertical. Okay. And so you've got gravity working on your behalf. And so adults tend usually not to get ear infections as readily as children do. And I could imagine years, years ago before antibiotics, mm -hmm. this, could have, this could have resulted oh. in many long-standing problems. Think about the middle ear. Yeah, you betcha. The middle ear is a little room, and it's about as big as a sugar cube. And in that little room about a centimeter by a centimeter by a centimeter are the three smallest bones of your body, the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup. Now, though that, that little room, when it gets plugged up or it, when it gets infected, there's fluid built up behind, and it turns into pus. And that's mm -hmm. now an infection. And it's got nowhere to drain. It's got nowhere to drain. And guess what? The roof of that little middle ear space of that sugar cube is an eighth of an inch about a third of a, of a centimeter from the, from the bottom of your brain. Mm. Now, if left untreated, middle ear pathology can do really nasty 
things. It can infect the bone behind. If you put your finger behind your ear and you feel that round bone, that's your mastoid bone. That's filled with pockets of air. That can get infected. And when that's infected, no antibiotic is going to help you. So you need to go and get that surgically dealt with. So before really, antibiotics, when you got an a earache as a kid, it wasn't good. And But you know, the, the thing too is earaches and middle ear infections are increasing in Why our society. I think it's because of the junk we put in our food. I think people did get ear infections and they could lead to nasty results. But the truth is in the 1800s, the food was... Simple. Purer, yeah. simpler, more yeah. honest. Mm -hmm. And today we do get weird pathologies that our forebears didn't get as much because of all the genetically modified whatever it is that we're eating today. So that uh, results in nowadays doctors for kids that are mm -hmm. growing putting yeah. in tubes, right? Yeah, and it and it, that's a good, yeah, tubes in the ear are a little hole. They puncture the eardrum hmm. and they put a little tiny spool in that hole to keep that hole. You're, to keep that little puncture open. Just to get enough air in and there. And that allows air to communicate into the middle ear. And so if the, if the, if the front door doesn't work, you use station tubes, use the back door. Mm. You know, either way, it's to ventilate and open up that middle ear space so the air in there can communicate with the air outside. And that's why you have those eustachian tubes in the back of your throat leading to your middle ear because when you swallow, you know, it temporarily... Yep. That's air up. You know, yep. when you're going up in an airplane, you can yep. feel your ears and you blow your nose or you swallow or, or you, you crack yawn. your jaw yeah. a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And then that temporarily opens up those tubes and whew, new air gets in there and you feel better. Well, I, was, I had a woman on a flight recently and she was in agony. Yeah, she had a cold hurt. and she was coming down and she was just beside herself. It can hurt. Because it, it, you got no, no relief, no way to no, get the no. pressure changed. That's earaches hurt mm -hmm. and the ear has a lot of nerves that that go to it uh, that are sensory pain nerves so the uh but the, if you've got a sore throat that you station tube ain't working anymore and it's not letting new air in when you swallow or yawn and now your middle ear little space gets angry and it rebels all right when we come back with uh dr ted venema we're going to talk uh more about the outer and in, inner ear now uh, sorry the outer, outer and, and middle, middle ear you got it and then we'll talk about the inner ear yep. towards the end of the show and the different kinds of hearing loss mm -hmm. and what you can do about it obviously yes. you're here with next gen hearing uh there are solutions for a lot of people and we'll continue the conversation next on boomer life celebrating the baby boomer lifestyle this is boomer life on cl 650